living in the land of shadow of death. The light has dawned. For the time on Jesus began to preach, repent. Hallelujah. In that time, Jesus started to preach. And this is a prophetic word and, you know, such a powerful promise for the land of Naphtali and land of Zebulun. Hallelujah. Two lands. See, those are the names of two tribes of Israel. You know, what, are, what is the significance? You had to go back to Genesis. Who was Zebulun? This is the main area that Jesus started his ministry. The main area which he, which he was ministering was in the land of Galilee. Hallelujah. Out of many areas in Israel. This is the place which God placed Jesus. Hallelujah. He came to, came to um, Jerusalem only a few times in his, in, his, in his whole entire three and a half years of ministry. Only a few times. Most of the time, Jesus spent his time in this, uh, in this place called Galilee. Hallelujah. What is the significance? Bible says this is a fulfillment of a promise. Everybody say fulfillment of a promise. Fulfillment of a promise. And when you come to Genesis chapter 30 verse 19, this is where Zebulun was born. Zebulun was the sixth son of Jacob. Sixth one. And um, um, his mother was Leah. Then Leah conceived again. Verse 19. Le Leah conceived again and bore Jacob a sixth son. And Leah said, God had endowed me with good endowment. The other, the other version says, God has given me a good gift. Everybody said good gift. He's a good gift. Hallelujah. See, when you, when you read about Leah, she was ignored. She was rejected in that house. And, she, um, and every time she, he hoped that her husband would love her. She hoped that her husband would, would um, honor her. And she would be cared in the house. She always hoped, hoped. She born when a child was born in, in when Judah was born. He said, "Now I'll start praising him." Hallelujah! And when Zebulun was born, she made a declaration in the same way and said, "Now God, even though things are going wrong in a in a family, she is looking at a God who is a giver of good gifts." Hallelujah. She is looking at the mercies of God instead of complaining. She's seeing the favor of God in her life. Hallelujah. She had every reason to complain. She, she would have said, this is unfair. This is injustice. Oh, so much of rejection. She didn't do that. Instead, Rachel is making a declaration. Rachel said, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister and I have prevailed. And she called him Naphtali. Hallelujah. She, she blessed Naphtali. Hallelujah. Every time she could, she had uh, physically, she was unable. Um, you know, she was not able to bear a child. And God blessed this maid servant and gave Naphtali. Now Rachel is blessing this on the other hand. Hallelujah. But when this um, Zebulun and Naphtali, they grew up. They, they grew up as brothers together, together. Hallelujah. As the house of Israel was, was growing in, in, within Jacob, Jacob saw them grow in front of them. Promises, nations were growing in front of the, him. Hallelujah. When Jacob was saying, I believe he would, he would see a great nation. Reuben is growing. When, when Judah is coming up, I know. Hallelujah. There are so many nations in front of him going, growing up. Blessings of God. Blessings of God. Tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. When Naphtali was coming, you know, both of them were blessed by their mothers. Hallelujah. Rachel was, took the mothership and she blessed Metali. Zebulun was blessed by Eliah. Hallelujah. When you come again, in, 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 there's a time that Jacob, you know, I think uh, we, we heard it in the morning. Jacob started blessing his sons in, in Genesis chapter 49. Verse 13, he's blessing Zebulun. 
Zebulun will live by seashore and become a haven for ships. His borders will extend towards Sidon. Hallelujah. He was blessed by his mother. He is now blessed by his father. Hallelujah. In the same way, you can see and for Nephtali, 49 verse 21. Nephtali is a hind, is a deer let loose. He gives goodly words. Hallelujah. There will be good words out of Nephtali. This is a promise of God. Hallelujah. He said, one, this land will be near the seashore. And second one, out of Nephtali, there will be good words spoken out. Hallelujah. Everybody say good words. The gospel will be coming out of Naphtali. Hallelujah. Naphtali had a great promise of God. You see, two, two promises that is very important for anybody. A, pro, a, a blessing, uh, two blessings. That is one from father, other from mother. Hallelujah. A father blessing father and a mother who blesses. Hallelujah. See, this is a spiritual uh, thing. To have, have our parents blessing us in everything. See, um, many instances when we don't have parents. This is when God promises. He is a father to an orphan. He will take that place and bless you. Hallelujah. In other words, if you have a physical father, you have to have, have a good relationship with them. If you have a, a spiritual, if you have a physical mother in, now, you have to have a good relationship with them. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible says. With the, there is a promise which says, when you honor your father and mother, hallelujah, you will be blessed in the land. Hallelujah. If you don't have, if, you know, we know many, uh, all are not the same, but in that instance, this is what the faithfulness of God is. The Holy Spirit will come as a mother to you. The Father God will stand in, in that place of an orphan. Hallelujah. Where, where, where there is no father, where there is no mother, God himself will come and bless you. Hallelujah. This is the God we serve. See, Zebulun and Naphtali was blessed by father and mother. Not that, not even that, you know. Years passed. The three blessings that is very important for any human being is a, is a father's blessing, mother's blessing, and third is a blessing from a servant of God. See, when you come down again, after years, you know, years went away. People started to forget about this. Still, one, one, by, one by one, many forgot about what, is, what happened, you know. But God started reminding them. God started reminding them. Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Now again, see, Jacob blessed, he died. Years passed, 400 years gone, 450, 500 years gone. Now, there is a man from nowhere called Moses. He is blessing the same Zebulun. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Verse 18 says, then Zebulun, about Zebulun, he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in your going out, and you, Issachar, in your tents. They will summon people to the mountain, and they offer the sacrifices of righteousness. They will feast in the abundance of seas, and the treasures in hidden sand. Great blessing. Hallelujah. Now Zebulun is blessed by Moses. And about Naphtali, in verse 13, Naphtali is abounding with favor of God and full of his blessing, he will inherit southward to the lake. Hallelujah. These two tribes have been blessed again. After centuries, after, after centuries of Jacob, this man of God, Moses, this is what God does. When he makes a promise, everyone seems to forget about it. Years will go. Months will go. Hallelujah. When everyone is not at all bothered about it, everybody thinks that it's all gone, done, done. And he will send someone and remind you. What he has said, he will stand with the promise. Hallelujah. This is the God that we serve. He is the author and he is the finisher. 
if he has started with a promise he will make sure that is done in your life hallelujah he is not a politician to pro, pro, to make a promise and forget about it no he will remember not only that he will remind you again and again again and again remember i have told you remember i have told you remember hallelujah see th this is what happens now moses is saying when everybody thought that's gone you know there's, there's no nothing there's no tribe these two tribes are the forgotten tribes of israel is naphtali and zebulun they are known as the forgotten tribes they are not very significant they are where the forgotten ones there are many uh, um, um, categories of tribes among the 12 of them but these two were known as the forgotten tribes hallelujah they were forgotten they were rejected and after that see moses's time has gone now it seems that you know they, they went back in backslide they did everything wrong in the sight of the lord you know they were they were far away they do so many unnecessary battles together and now zebulun and naphtali people thought that they have fallen from the grace already gone away backslidden everything gone but afterwards when it was time of a of a prophet called isaiah god again started the same thing he said remember i have promised hallelujah he took that book again the file file has been searched again and said i have promised you hallelujah see that's that's a, such a wonderful verse i'll i'll make it very quick isaiah chapter 9 nevertheless there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress in the past he humbled the land of zebulun and the land of naphtali but in the future he will honor galilee of the nations by the way of sea beyond jordan hallelujah there is a time of honor coming hallelujah when everything seems to be forgotten when everything seems that they are they have the forgotten tribe they have gone back but there is a time of honor this second man of god is standing and prophesying over these two tribes and saying you naphtali and zebulun your time of honor is coming your time of honor is coming hallelujah every darkness he is going to take away and you will start hearing what what jacob has promised over you centuries ago hallelujah this is the god we serve he is a fulfiller of promise everybody say my god is a fulfiller of promise my god is a fulfiller of promise hallelujah if he has promised you about something he knows how to fulfill it when you say lord i know you have spoken to me i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah years will not um, uh, take take me away from that promise i believe there is a time for fulfillment of every promise hallelujah see and when 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 you come in verse 2 people walking in darkness have seen great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light was dawned you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy they rejoice before you and the people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice hallelujah verse 4 in the day of midian's defeat you have scattered the yoke the burden them when you come to verse 6 this is a this is a very common you know most mostly used verse in the bible we can see for us a child is born for us means who uh, joseph and mary no this verse is speaking about zebulun and naphtali now zebulun and naphtali is looking at each other and said for us a born a child is born hallelujah somebody that will bring the life to the promise that centuries ago jacob has uh, um, um talked to us has spoken over us hallelujah for us a child is born to us a child is given hallelujah it is given 
Everybody say, my promise is given. My fulfillment is given. Hallelujah. The word that has been spoken over me in prayer. Hallelujah. When through the word of God, every word of promise from heaven is being given in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Prophetically, it was in, in the time of Isaiah. You know, Isaiah lived um, centuries before Jesus. And he just said, it is given. It is given. Hallelujah. They looked to that fulfillment and said, it is given. Hallelujah. See, this is what happens. This is a, is a principle in Christian life. Even if you don't see the fulfillment, you look to it and thank God and said, it is given. Everybody said, thank God. And, um, and it is given. Every promise, if you, if, you are, if you are praying, if the Lord has spoken over certain areas of your life, look to it and say, thank you because it is given. Thank you, Jesus, because it is given. Hallelujah. See, this is what happens. This now Spiritually, these two land of Zebulun and Naphtali, they are looking at each other and say, it is given. Hallelujah. For us, a boy, a boy is born. Hallelujah. A child is born. And to us, a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of greatness of his governance and peace. There will be no end. Hallelujah. Now these two lands are looking to other, other tribes and say, see, everybody has forgotten us. This, you know, um, um, the problem with Galilee, Galilee is now um, you know, the land where Zebulun and Naphtali is. Hallelujah. They're, it is known as Galilee. Together they are known as Galilee. Galilee was a place which was forgotten and nobody wanted to go there. Hallelujah. Nobody wanted to go there. You know, certain sub suburbs in, in Melbourne, you can know. Some people, you know, you don't want to buy your house there. Same way, this, this Galilee was a place which Jews didn't want to go. They didn't want. They'd never um, take anybody in marriage in, in those, from those areas. If you are from Galilee, they will go away from you. No, we are from Jerusalem. Very undignified, undignified place, you know? No, place of no reputation. Galilee, now. Nah. But Jesus is so faithful. This is a prophetic word for many. Hallelujah. Many have put a label on you saying you are of no worth. Nothing will come out good. You, you will raise only this much. But our God is a God who is faithful, who sees everything, and he will honor you with his faithfulness. He will honor you by standing on top of that place. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful God. Hallelujah. He is a God of restoration. The first miracle happened in John chapter 2. First miracle. Hallelujah. Everybody know that's in, that's in Cana. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana, verse 2. John chapter 2, verse 2. Galilee. Cana of Galilee. Hallelujah. Verse 11 says, Jesus did his first of his sign in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Cana was a message of restoration. Cana showed out of shame, God restores you. Hallelujah. They were going into a great shame. The wedding was, you know, there was lack in that place. There was, there was um, you know, um, dishonor in that place. Now Jesus restored it back. Now people were about to, um, you know, be sad, grieving, but there is a great rejoicing now. Hallelujah. Everybody started rejoicing. The atmosphere changed when God, when his ministry started. He started his ministry not in Jerusalem. He didn't go to that place. He didn't go to the temple and start his ministry. No, 
He chose this land of Galilee because there is a serious message for many of us saying God will start his ministry in you. God will do greater things in you. God will restore you. God will um, um, satisfy you. Every dishonor, he will change it and honor you in front of all your enemies. Hallelujah. This is the first miracle. You know, one after the other. That's Straight he went to, a, to the sea where, you know, in Capernaum, there was a, there was a, a, a lake, there was a man who is already whinging around saying that I didn't get anything. I know this land is like this. It's a cursed land. No fish, no net. My net is empty. Hallelujah. Now Jesus is entering that sea and he said, cast it now. Cast now. Every emptiness will be gone in the name of Jesus. In the appointed time of God, the atmosphere of Galilee started to change. Hallelujah. This cursed land had a problem. Always. This is a cursed land now. Hallelujah. Because of their wrong um, um, walking um, uh, centuries ago. This land is empty. Empty. This land is always having problem. Whatever you do, never succeed. But Jesus is standing now and saying, there is good news to you. Jesus is standing now and saying that there be fullness out of the sea and Peter is putting the net and this is this message for um, most of us every emptiness will be gone in the name of Jesus hallelujah when the atmosphere shifts when the time of fulfillment comes every emptiness will be gone and there will be gladness hallelujah now Peter after that is calling his friends come 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 help me everybody together they took the catch hallelujah most of his miracles were in Galilee most of them out of his recorded ministry, more than 85 percentage happened in Galilee. Hallelujah. Most of the days that he spent in out of three and a half years of his ministry, nearly three years, he was in this Galilee. Hallelujah. He didn't want to go anywhere else, but he was there preaching, healing, doing miracles, miracles, miracles. Hallelujah. As a fulfillment, as an honor to that land, to those two uh, tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, which others have forgotten, which others said nothing will come out. This is, the, this is going to be a message for you. Hallelujah. When all have forgotten about you, many have um, ignored you, many have said, oh, I don't know you. Hallelujah. See, this is the time that Jesus is looking at you and saying, I will honor you for whatever you are. Hallelujah. I will be with you. I will honor you. I will bless you. And many will see that my hand is with you. This is the message. Hallelujah. To Hallam. Many people might have said that nothing good will come out of Hallam. But to Hallam we are saying there will be great revival in the name of Jesus. The hand of the Lord will do mighty things in this place. Hallelujah. Because the season is coming of promise. Hallelujah. There is a promise over the land of Australia. We take it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Many will stand up and proclaim the good news out of this land. Hallelujah. And there will be mighty miracles which you can, we can't ever comprehend. This is the time of a shift in the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Shall we lift our hands and say hallelujah? Lift it and say for my family, I receive it. For myself, I receive it. Hallelujah. There is a shift. Hallelujah. There is an honor coming from the Lord. There is an honor. Hallelujah. See, out of his, he started taking disciples. There are the, he was traveling all over the world, all over the areas of Israel. Hallelujah. Out of them, he started. He, one, one day, Bible says he prayed whole night and he came down and he chose 12 disciples. You know, out of 12, 11 of them are from Galilee. 11 of them. Unbelievable, right? 11 of them. They are not, they are not you know, scientists or nothing. Fishermen, normal people, hallelujah. Fishermen, tax collectors, you know, very, very ordinary people, ordinary people, just like you and me, hallelujah. See, only one came from Jerusalem, you know, only outskirts of Jerusalem, one. And that was Judas Iscariot. 
but all the eleven they stood with Jesus. They went around the world preaching the gospel. They were faithful. Hallelujah. Because they were from the land of Galilee. Hallelujah. The promise is upon them. They will stand faithful. Hallelujah. They will go around and preach, preach, preach. Hallelujah. This is what happens when God chooses you out of nowhere. Hallelujah. You are not qualified, but when you stand by his grace, you will say, hallelujah. I don't know what, how I will do it, but I know the God who has honored me, he is with me. He will make me things which I can never imagine. Hallelujah. Out of my, out of every box that, that with the, of the human abilities, God will make me do greater things. This is the season for that. Hallelujah. See, one after the other, Galilee is now famous all over the world, along with the good news of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, Acts chapter 1, at last, Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Jesus loved that place, loved that place. See, when Jesus was ascending to, to the heaven, hallelujah, angel of God came down. When the people were looking at up, you know, they were looking at Jesus going up. The angel didn't say people of Jerusalem, people of Israel, no. People of Galilee, people of Galilee, there is another promise. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who had been taken from you into heaven will come back the same way you have seen him. Hallelujah. Thank you.